This is WENY News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. And I'm Nick Quaterni. Thanks for joining us for WENY News at 5.30. We begin tonight with weather as snow is beginning to fall across much of the Twin Tiers. And we've got you covered to keep you informed on the weather and road conditions as things develop. WENY Chief Meteorologist Joe Varis is live outside our studio in Horseheads with a look at what's going on right now. Joe? All right, thanks a lot, guys. Not so bad just yet. Uh, we are tracking a nor'easter lifting up along the mid Atlantic coast in the leading edge of the precipitation, knocking on our doorstep right now. In fact, outside our studios, a little bit of uh, mixed rain and sleet combination. Uh, this precipitation will begin to fill in and intensify here in the next few hours and switch over to snow and become heavy at times here through the overnight period. Because of that, the National Weather Service continues with that winter storm warning in effect through 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon for the entire viewing area. There it is on radar right now, and you can see a lot of Atlantic moisture lifting back up towards the north and west, and we're going to be in on that through much of the overnight period before gradually tapering off tomorrow morning. And you can see the leading edge of that precipitation running into some colder air, and it's a mixture of sleep, cold rain, and some snow across some of the higher elevations right now. But uh, this wintry mix will transition over to all snow here as we progress through the later evening hours, and that snow could become heavy at times through the overnight period. Combine that with some gusty northeasterly winds, and we can't even rule out some scattered power outages here in the Twin Tiers. So let's check in on current conditions right now in Elmira. Still above freezing 39 degrees, but again, as that precipitation continues to fill in and become heavier, uh, that will drop temperatures closer to the freezing mark. Winds right now out of the east northeast sustained at 11 miles an hour, but again, it will become gusty through the overnight period. So our first forecast for the rest of tonight, that mix over to snow, that'll be heavy at times through the overnight period. Temperatures right around freezing, gusty winds out of the northeast. The snow winds down tomorrow morning, then it looks like some improvement by midweek. But uh, by the time all is said and done, uh, most of us looking at between four and eight inches of snow here in the Twin Tiers. I'll let you know exactly what to expect for that morning commute coming up in just a bit. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Well, today marked day 10 in the Thomas Clayton murder trial in Stuban County Court. Jurors today hearing largely in part from a forensic investigator talking about blood splatter inside the Clayton home. And our very own WNY's Logan Wilson has the latest from today's wrap up. Nick and Renata, only three people took the stand today for day 10 of Thomas Clayton's murder trial. And the majority of witness testimony today was from a New York State Police senior investigator from the Forensic Identification Unit. Senior investigator Kevin Sucker spent hours on the stand. He begun his testimony by showing jurors more than 100 photos of blood spatter evidence at the crime scene, including some photos of Kelly Clayton's body. This was an emotional time for family and friends in the courtroom. And during cross-examination, the defense questioned why the scene wasn't investigated as a robbery as well, citing no evidence collected from the FIU team of a lockbox underneath the Clayton's bed. The defense also asked if the investigator walked Clayton through the home to see if anything was missing. Senior investigator Sucker did testify to taking note of a large safe in the basement. He said the safe was locked and the footprints he observed in front of the safe were old. The defense also tried to poke holes in the witness's testimony by comparing small items that were moved in a picture. After senior investigator Sucker's hour long testimony, the owner of RS Parker Landscaping testified about having surveillance video at his property in Elmira Heights, but didn't know how to use it. And a New York State canine handler testified to his dog Dodge finding the alleged murder weapon on October 3rd, 2015. Now, Special Prosecutor Whedon Wetmore could not confirm who will be taking the stand tomorrow morning. But as always, for the latest updates on this case, you can follow me on Twitter. But for now, reporting from the Steben County Courthouse, Logan Wilson, WENY News. And we're continuing to follow breaking news. From earlier this morning, investigators were at the ASU Appliances Center on Lake Road in Elmira late into the afternoon today after an explosion early this morning. Fire crews from Elmira Heights and Horseheads responded to the building around 1.30 a.m. Firefighters saw a corner of the building had been blown out and the building was on fire. 
That can fire was completely out by 4 a.m., but no word yet on a cause. WEMY News will bring you updates as they become available. And Elmira police say they arrested a man after responding to seven shootings in a six month span at his home. According to police, 27 year old Michael Dumas Jones is being charged with criminal nuisance. Police say four people have been shot inside the house during that time frame. The most recent shooting was Sunday morning. A 32 year old Elmira man whose name is not released was seriously injured after being shot several times. He was taken to an area hospital for treatment. And Elmira police are looking into a burglary at the Grace Episcopal Church on Church Street. Police say someone broke into the church sometime between 11 o'clock on Saturday night and 7 o'clock the next morning. Authorities say damage was done to both the inside and the outside of the church and money was stolen. And EPD is also investigating an armed robbery and gang assault that happened shortly after midnight at Hudson Street Park. Police say a 16 year old was threatened with a knife and then jumped by at least four people. The victim suffered a broken jaw and nose and anyone with information into either of these incidents is asked to contact the Elmira Police Department. And two Elmira residents have been arrested in connection with a burglary in the town of Horseheads. 21 year old Tyler Seeley and 25 year old Rebecca Seeley are both charged with second degree burglary and criminal possession of stolen property. Police say the pair stole guns, prescriptions and alcohol from a home in Horseheads. Both were sent to the Chemung County Jail. Tyler Seeley's bail was set at $500, Rebecca's at $1,000. The New York State Senate Finance Committee will begin hearings on Governor Andrew Cuomo's 2017-2018 proposed budget tomorrow. Last week, Cuomo released a $162 billion spending plan. The Senate Finance Committee and the Assembly Ways and Means Committee will conduct joint hearings through the end of February. Each hearing focuses on a specific area of the budget, and this week they will focus on higher education and workforce development. And New York lawmakers will again consider a bill that would let people suffering from terminal illnesses to request life ending drugs. The bill would require two physicians to certify the patient's illness is terminal and physicians could refuse to agree the request for any reason. The bill passed an assembly committee last year, but it didn't get a full vote in the legislature. Supporters say the bill gives suffering patients the freedom to end their lives with dignity. Opponents worry that the measure would be abused and say the bill will require a close study. Corning Incorporated CEO Wendell Weeks was one of several business leaders that met with President Donald Trump this morning. In a statement, Corning says Weeks described the meeting as positive. In that meeting, Trump discussed policies to promote American manufacturing and jobs creation. Corning Inc. says they are planning to expand their U.S. manufacturing footprint over the next several years. President Trump will meet with more business leaders tomorrow morning, this time from the auto industry. Coming up, and President Trump has his full first official business day in office. We'll explain some of the executive orders that Trump signed earlier today. And conditions will continue to go downhill as we progress through the evening hours. I'll let you know how long the snow will stick around coming up right after the break. But first, a live look at our Mansfield Skycam. You're watching WENY News at 530.